Hey all, and welcome back to Bex Squared Gaming. Scottish Bex is playing more Seven Days to Die. She is doing this on Nomad difficulty and absolutely no mods. Let's see how it goes. Hey all, welcome back to day 60. It's getting quite good. Like, we're, we're kind of slowly creeping up the days. We've got a lot of good shit now, so it's definitely feeling great. I think, um... Where my brain is going at this point is, you know, we really need to be getting as much of the base done as we can. We've got a couple of days to hoard. I need to fix up the other one. Where I think I would like to go today is I'm going to go up to the mine. I'm going to go up to the mine and I'm going to do repair work on the other base. And here's why. I know that it's not that stimulating for you guys. So, you know, I appreciate if it's not your thing. I absolutely get that. But the reason I need to do it is I just need it. I need to get a whole load of stuff. And it is part of the game. The building, the mining, the resource gathering. It is a huge part of the game. And while I could do this off video, I 100% understand that you would lose a day. And then it would be like, well, where did, where did that day go? So I'm going to do it. And I'm just making it very clear to you that this is what I'm doing today. So, um, yeah, but I mean, we, we still get might get jumped by stuff and things like that. So, you know, it could go. But I'm going to take my stuff. I'm going to take the I'm going to take the usuals with me and I'm going to head up. And I just I need to get so much more iron. I'm now out of iron and I need to get more because we're, we need so much more steel. And now that I'm, I think I've got tons of concrete now, so I'm feeling better and I can then start using the other the other forge to start putting to start putting steel on as well and i should have had two two going from the beginning but you know that is what it is um so let's let's get out there do you know what i am gonna do uh sorry sudden detour i'm gonna bring some coffee and stuff with me let's do this sensibly ladies and gentlemen so I'm going to get up there and I'm just going to mine the crap out of uh, the iron mine today. And then potentially towards the end of the day, do a load of repair work on my other base and see if we can get, you know, because that is, that is getting there. So, if we, you know, we do really need to think about that, to be honest. I'm going to take some of it because I don't eat this. I'm going to take some of this with me as well for food wise and get rid of some of this. Um, Definitely. I do need to think about grinding out some animals as well okay that sounded wrong that sounded wrong animal lovers please do not come for me that was not what i meant um as in oh, this is not going to sound any better i need fat and the only way to get fat in this game is either find it or off the animals so i need to go on a killing spree to the animals please don't shoot me for that statement um that it yeah it needs to be done i need i need i need the fat um i need to read i mean i kept saying oh i don't need anything from the kitchens i, I do i need the fat from the kitchens and I need to remember that. Um, so let's get up here and get a load of done in here. So there may be some jumping with this. I may waffle. Today is probably actually just going to be me waffling as I work. So um, if you're not into listening to my dulcet tones as I do that, then fair dues, guys. Put me on mute and let it run or, you know, whatever works for you. But in general, tis the plan today. So I think I've actually mined out, other than the... the I've mined out a huge chunk of the iron already at this level. I might need to start thinking about going down to my next level. Um, and when I do that, sometimes I actually fill this in for ease so I can walk around a bit easier. And other times I just leave it open. It's just up to it. So I'm just going to get stuck in. I didn't bring the auger. I'm not a massive fan of the auger because it just goes really loud. And when you're trying to talk and do stuff, it's really disrupting. So to be honest... You know, yeah, it's great for your... It doesn't use your stamina. It just uses your fuel. But, you know... I have coffee for that. It's fine. So I've been reading up on some of the notes of what's coming out on the release. Getting kind of excited. Um, some of it's a bit not really interested in. Certain things always get my attention. I'm not a massive person for cosmetics like i get that people go crazy for them and you know if you are one of those people excellent great i mean we all should have something we love in games and you know and i am for like i play the sims not gonna lie people right and yes i download loads of different hairstyles and um different clothing for my sims because i don't like the way the standard stuff is so and when i play those games yes i absolutely do use you know cosmetics and how things look but that's different to me that's a huge part of the game whereas in games like this i'm not as fussed about how my character looks i'm not gonna lie i really don't care 
Um, but I get for other people, it's just a thing in the game that they love and, you know, that's great. So some of the cosmetic and stuff that they're doing with the armor sets, it depends on the armor sets they're doing. So everybody knows I'm a massive fan of sort of um, ninja, samurai and all that kind of stuff. So I think for me, and I have been since uh, the, the mid 90s, that might give away my age a tiny little bit. Um, so... I definitely would love if they had a set that resembles that, but to be honest, does that style really fit with this game? Yeah, there's an argument for that. Um, so I think that usually, like, so any game I play, like, I know my Dying Light game, I think it's the ninja set I run with in my Dying Light game on cosmetics. So, I mean, everyone has the thing that they run with, really, don't they? And, um, you know, but in general, not a massive cosmetics person. Doesn't really do... Doesn't really do it for me. But if it does for you, maybe that's going to be a great addition for you. Not really for me, but it might be for you in this game. Um, I am interested in general as to if they're going to... It looks like they're going to be changing up the armor stuff. It doesn't look like they're adding the NPCs in until it's part of the roadmap going forward. So I, again, I will be interested to see if they're going to add bandits and NPCs and all that in at some point. That definitely will change up the game quite a lot, I think. Um, quite excited about potentially where the game could go. I get that there's a lot of games out there. And I've had some people comment that... Rust is better, or, you know, Valheim's better, or whatever is better. But you know what, guys? Everyone has the games that they love, and I've never really... Um, I've seen Rust played, never played it myself. It never really caught my attention that much. Um, but each to their own. And again, I think that's it. So for me, Seven Days is a game I've loved since I ever first started playing it. And it has stayed with me. And I think I, I get very excited about it. There's other games that do the same. Every time a new Bioshock comes out, I get excited. Every time a new Elder Scrolls comes out, I get excited. With the exception of the online stuff. Not a massive MMO. Um, I, I did when I was younger. I played a lot of WoW. Uh, these days, not so much my thing. Um, I Mainly because... I have a very select set of friends that I game with and these days I find I prefer co-ops where I can play with them over MMOs where I have to deal with other people. Um, only because we've all been in that situation where you end up with an absolute twat muppet and then you're, you just think they just ruined the game for you and then you know and they shouldn't it shouldn't ruin the game for you but it does and then you're just like yeah I can't play this anymore. Um, not only that, I mean, I can't say it's because it's repetitive, because let's be honest, everything in this game is repetitive. I mean, you've seen that over and over. Oh, let's go to the trader, let's go out and quest, let's kill zombies. Every, every game, unless you're doing a story-based functionality, is repetitive. And even the story-based functionality is repetitive, because they take the same principles and just apply it with a slightly different principle. A uh, slightly different layout. It's it, They're all, it's all the same, you know. I mean, doing a Resident Evil game, for example, how many times, you know, oh, the story might be progressing, but the principles of what you're doing in it are the same. Shoot the boss, keep moving, you know. And that's not a dig at Resident Evil games or any other game. Um, it's, it's, there's only so much you can do, and every game is repetitive based on that principle. Right, um, mm, 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 mm. so I do five along, and then that is up on the fifth one, because... Block, wooden blocks hold th a weight of 36. Each block is six. So technically, you could go five blocks and then do one. But I do four. And the reason I do four is what I like to call my safety net. So I give myself one block of weight as a safety net. So that if I take something away, the whole thing does not suddenly collapse on my head. Safety net. So I never go up to the full limit of the of the blocks, I always give my blocks a safety buffer.
Then obviously join them so that they become completely joined and the weight spreads. So all the blocks essentially support each other. So every one of them that has a safety block adds yet another weight holder. And then you end up with a just a giant chain of additional block with extra weight to hold extra weight. So it sounds crazy, but it works for me. And I've never had the mind collapse on me while doing that. So if that works for me, that's what I do. So. Um, right. I'm not going to go... What I am going to do is put a block under there. Um... I'm not going to dig all that out because I don't need to go back there. That's fine. I think I, I might have done. No, I didn't do on that side. That's fine. So uh, I think at this point, oh, I think there's maybe a little bit still over here. No, there's still a little bit of iron over here. I try not just dig and dig and dig because that's where the danger of before you know it you've dug out too far and then you're trying to support the roof and the whole thing just comes down in your head so one two three nope three four five and then the whole thing just before you know it comes down on your head and yeah i try logically dig out one layer at a time so that all of this sort of four layer will get dug out and then I'll go down to the next four layer as such. Again, that's probably just me being OCD about it, but it just means I know that I need to just go deeper. Rather than digging down and then trying to support below, I know that this whole top layer is supported and going from there. It also means I know how far out above goes, so if this underneath spreads further, I'm supporting it onto the stone that was there rather than, you know, and it just makes it easier for building and, you know. I have my own weird ways of doing things. You get used to it. One, two, three. Four and a fathom. Like when I get really OCD about it, it ends like this. The walls all end like this. So I will keep doing it and digging out so that you end up with perfectly smooth walls against where you are. Um, that's when I'm being really weird about it and I need it to look exactly right. Uh, I don't always do that. And I'm not in that kind of mood today. So thankfully it can look ha haphazard. But when I get really obsessive about it, that's how it looks. So four up, four out. Always four. It's always going to sit on the fifth one, so there should always be four with nothing on it, and then the fifth block will always be the column. That's how I do it. And it works for me. I, I'd be interested to know how other people do their mine, other than just digging for gold. You know, what's the other process people do to do it? Like, do people have a set pattern of how they do theirs that uses less blocks and is more efficient would be interesting. Oh, we have guests. Anyone else? Anyone else coming to party? Oh, missed him. That looks like a small wandering horde. So it looks like there's two guys over there. Got him. I was gonna say, I could have swore I saw a second guy. There is, look. Wandering horde.
See, the problem with that is now there's two bags over there and I need to go get them. Uh, not really. I could leave them, but um, I, I, I like shiny shit, so I'm going to go get them. Eh, not sure it was worth going for. There's another bag over here somewhere. There it is. Nah. All right, let's get back in and finish what we were doing. We need to go down a layer now, I think. I think I've got all the iron at the top layer. Plenty of coal still in there, but I'm not really that looking for the coal right now, so... Uh, let's go see. Is there any more iron? Well, there's a little bit of iron still. Yeah, see, there is more iron here. lead. We're suddenly hitting lead? I need to reinforce this out. This is getting to the stage that there's stuff happening now and I, I'm a bit, a bit nervous that I haven't reinforced this out. One, two, three, oh. four. Should be the fifth block there. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. That's the fifth block there. Five, and then let's get. Good thing when you get to the lower levels is these these beams are already here for the roof so you're not having to put the roof bit up it's already there you're just putting the floor and the support beam in you're just putting your new ground layer in really essentially Thank you. 
This is getting interesting. This main has now got coal, lead, and iron in it. Let's have a look at the surface node. I don't see a lead node there, so there's one there. I highly doubt there's a node there, so it's possible it's... No, I would have thought... I mean, that could be the far reaches of that node, but I would I find that unlikely. Could be that I'm standing on it, so if I back away from that... Let's have a look. If I back away from it... Um, no, there's no lead node there, so that's interesting. The fact that we're finding lead, but there's no lead node there. Always follow... My argument is this. Always follow the gravel till it stops. Because if there's still gravel, there's still ore. So follow follow the gravel. So until you get back to complete rock all the way around, follow the gravel. Because it usually potentially means there's more ore. Like, see over here, like there's no more gravel. No more gravel. That potentially is there, but that's because, you know, there's... You know, so follow the gravel. If there's gravel, there's more potential ore behind that gravel. Otherwise, just let it go. Like, so that gravel is probably the last piece that was in connection to... Obviously didn't finish that, but that'll support it on the ceiling anyway, so that's fine. Don't technically need to put the last roof one in if it's going into stone. That one's going into stone, so it's going to support it, so I'm not worried about it. Um, so what I might do is start going down now. So there's a pillar there. So if we start with that pillar... And we're gonna go down four. So one, two, three, four. So I need to go down one more and put the ace in. So that, with that, it's got four, two, three. Oh, hang on, let me do that. Uh, with that is four. One, two, three, four. I think that's that. Yeah, one, one, two, three, four. I th I'm not sure that's four. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pick them back up. Three. No, it was four. Right, so that gives me an idea of where my next base layer is. So I now know that right there is the next level down. And I'm going to dig out everything that's around that. So that that's how I know. And that's how I'm going to work when I go down. I need to get down to that level now with my ramp. underneath and a box there um and then the ramp layer there you go and that takes me on to this layer so i now have my layer down and i can start working out from here As you can see, all I do is match it up to the one that's above and run it down. If you've done it right, taking away the support under that should not make it collapse because the rest of it will hold the weight. So if you've done it right, that's the way I work. It works for me for the most part, usually. I don't tend to stress about it. Um, like I say, I've yet to have it collapse on me. Here we 
we go. Next layer's up. What you need to do is just not dig out. If you see a pillar, don't dig out under it till you're ready to replace it. You can dig out most other things because the rest of it isn't really being supported. Um, I still try not dig out too much, but yeah. Basically, the theory is you dig out a pillar, you put another pillar in. Support it. And if you think you're worried that, for example, the one another reason I do layers at a time is so that I don't like if I've dug that down like three or four times, that's a big drop. And that's gonna break your leg. So the reason being another reason for digging out the top is so that I'm not having to then maneuver and risk falling and breaking my leg. Um because I don't have anything else to dig out on this layer. So in this situation where I know there's more, I might be inclined to put a few um sort of additional width blocks in just to get to the bits that I know I want to get to like that and then I'm not as worried about falling off and then it's safe and then I would take them out when I'm done only because I know there's other stuff there I haven't dug out but that that would be the principle the idea being that because you're leaving that open you can potentially drop down there and you could potentially kill yourself so uh yeah be careful when doing that <laughs> really is the best advice I can give One of the other slightly sneaky things I do sometimes is that if I know I've got a pillar I want to put out like this one here, I don't dig out the whole central column. I dig to that pillar, then put that pillar in, then dig out. So I would then, so I wouldn't dig out this supporting section here or this supporting section here until I've put that pillar in. So what I might do is dig along the sides of it. So not actually digging it out, but like doing this along the edges. Don't dig that out, just go along till you can get to it. As so. So you know there's going to be a block that would run along there. Um, and under here. So you know this is going to be the layer here that you're going to need to dig to. So all I would do is dig along. Don't actually dig out the piece that's fully supporting the underneath of that. Right, and then when you get to the bit you do want to do, You obviously can't dig directly into a corner. We know this. So once you get there, then get to the bit you want and then dig it out. Like that. So just one of the corners, like that. And then you can put your supporting pillar in. So you can now put your supporting pillar in before you dig out the supports near it. One two, three, four. And now, I've, because I've got that pillar in, if I come back up here, or I can get to the top, 
I'm now I can now easily take away that one. I mean, you can do the same with that corner as well. And the idea is you then don't take away the supporting sides until you've got your pillars in. That's actually a more safer way of doing it because then you ensure that the weight above is completely supported as well, and then put your pillars in so that you know then it's supported. That, that, there's just different ways of doing it. I do find that is the most efficient way of doing it. Just I, I get lazy and I don't always do that. I take my chances, but. That is a way of doing it. So you just take out your support now that you've got it. And now you're there and just dig to put the beam in. One, two, three, four, plus the block. Usually you should put the bottom block in first and go up, but we'll not argue that. Um, and now you've got those three in, you can take away that supporting bit and that supporting bit. So now I'm not worried about digging out this column here because it's supported. On both sides. need to everyone can do it their way i know a lot of people just dig and dig and let it collapse and dig and dig and that's fine if you're happy to have giant holes all over your map because you're you know where they are and you're not going to run into them i don't tend to do it that way i don't like zombies dropping in on my head from above it's a personal choice it's just a personal choice How much iron have I got? Right, so I've got one, two, three, four, five. I need another stack of iron. So yeah, I appreciate guys. This is not the most interesting thing to watch. Um, it is, however, an important part of the game. So, you know. I mean, yeah, the argument could be just go quest, get loads of coin, just keep buying steel. And you're absolutely right, I can, but they only sell so much of it and you just have to you just the amount you would have to constantly like buy and you'd have to go and do a round every day at the traders and buy whatever steel they had available that day at the trader and you would have to do that every single day to get potentially enough steel to do what you need and i i just yeah and the amount of gold i mean that alone would take up half a day and that's before you then think well i need to also then go do quests and that that you're absolutely right if you're playing it on your own and you have the time and you're doing night quests and then you're running around the traders during the day great great for you um and i'm glad that works for you but obviously from a streaming or a video perspective that doesn't work so good so So let's So I'm kind of glad actually because you've got you've been able to see now how I actually then bring my mine down a layer because um, you've only ever seen the previous layer so it's been quite good to actually demo how I then bring my mine down. 
sometimes what I do with these is I put additional support in along here because it is supporting the ramp down as well. So sometimes I do add additional support in and sometimes what I do is actually wall that in and just keep the wall going all the way down. But it just depends on how I'm feeling. Because you do have additional wooden frames here to support. I don't know if I need to go out that way. I don't see any iron out that way. I'm not sure there is any iron out that way. doesn't look like I need to dig. Oh no, there's iron there, so there is some. So let's put my... Three, four, five. So there's one that way, so we can go that way with that. No. So there's iron there. And there's still gravel there, so there's definitely more stuff in that direction. I'm not... I don't see any that would go out this way. So what I'm going to do is, now that I've put the pillar in anyway... What I'm going to do. It's usually better to leave the last one sitting on a pile of rock, but only because I've put the pillar in. I'm going to do this. I like the pillars connected to the other pillars ensure the weight support goes so that there's now a proper weight support for that um so let's needs to go oh I went one further than I thought I did color needs to go here So we did have a viewer who was interested in how we build the main structure. So this has been a little bit of a slower video, not as sped up. So hopefully for them, they've been able to get a better feel for how we actually do the main structure. Yeah. 
So, oh, I'm ro oh, 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 no, not good. Let's eat that. Eat that. Um, eat that. So let's. There we go. There's some more space, right? So we do have quite a few bundles now. I'm I'm tempted to head back um, and put a load on because we we have now got a load in. Um, and I, obviously all I do is do one, like I did up here. I'll do one block out, or sometimes two, and then you start with the next layer down. But the thing is, is sometimes it's a case of um, I always find it better to usually, if you can, just go straight down and down and down. It's quicker, but if you get to the stage like this, where there's no iron or anything out that direction, and it's all back, and it's like you're going way back in that direction, just turn it round. Just turn round here, and then start going back down from here. It just means you have to stop and come back out and round, but um, there's no point in going out and out and out to the point that you're miles off that direction, and then you have to come round anyway. So, it, you know, you're going to have to turn around and come back on yourself. You might as well. So you can see what I mean about how this is a nice big hole now. If I go down yet another layer, that's going to be quite a drop. So sometimes I will fill it over, and I will, but I won't fill it over with solid blocks because these, these blocks weigh a lot less. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll fill in a layer like that. But again, like I say, that only really matters if you've got stuff like over here that you're still trying to get to. Otherwise, it really doesn't matter because you're not going to, you're just going to be coming in and going straight down to the layer that you need. You're not even going to be walking over here. So it makes, it makes no difference. So, so I'm going to head back. I'm going to get some of my water. And... Get, check where the steel's going, get a load more going into the forges and then think about a bit more stuff to do. I don't know why I closed that. So let's go, I think, I, what did I get? I got a few, yeah, let's go put some stuff back up in there. Stone is kind of chewing in. What can I make? I can make another. Right. Um. I got. I didn't even realize I got so much um coal there as well. I mean, I really don't. It's the nitrate I'm really needing now. I don't need much more coal. Um. So let's see where we are. Right, so yeah, that's finished chewing through. So let's get a load more iron chewing into there. And to be honest, I think I'm going to swap out the stone and start putting iron and clay into this. What I do need to make for this is a... need a bellows and a few other things for this. So let's, let's get them built. So we need the bellows. So wood, leather, short iron pipe, duct tape, nails. So, um, wood, 
stock tea, short iron pipes, nails. How many nails? Uh, five nails. So let's. Leather. I'm gonna pick up the leather because I is an empty. So we'll get that one. The other one we need is the is it the anvil. Which is made on an anvil. Oh, there you go. Um craft that. That's gonna take six minutes. And then we need a crucible. And I know I can make a crucible. So a hundred forged iron, a load of mechanical parts. Yep, so um I don't think I've got that much forged iron, actually. No, I don't. To craft the forged iron, let that run, so... There we go. Um, so what we can do is stick a load more of the concrete mix on. Parts back because I'm gonna need the iron before I can even think about that. Um, I'm gonna put that. You know what? I'm gonna just. I'm not gonna put it. I'm just gonna put it in there for the moment. I'm gonna have to go all the way up the stairs. So the reason why I cleared this section out and moved everything upstairs was I planned to open all this back up again. So a bit like um that, so I could see because I did it in my my own little game that I'm not that that's when I'm playing and I'm not streaming. Or I'm not recording. Um, and, I, and it was great because I could constantly see everything around me at this level. And I loved it. I absolutely loved that at ground level. But um, I haven't done that here. So I did it with the intention of doing that and then never did that, weirdly. So I've definitely got tons of that floating around now. So. So that's still got a good four minutes. All right, um, what I might make actually is another. And I think I'm gonna go out and actually hack down some more trees. I was being really lazy I could just do that but I don't want to it's all little bits of wood Ah, just in time. Look at that.
What I'm going to do is... No, do you know what? I'll not take the steel over there. Because there's not a massive amount I can do. I might wait till I've got a bit more steel to go over there. What I am going to do... Is pick up some of this. And do some more work out here around the house, I think. I think, yeah. need the clay I just I need to let stuff chew in and you know I, I I could go back to the mine but there's more work I want to do out here as well so Oh, it looks we're finishing on a bit of fun. Anyone else? Hello? Don't know why I eat them. Um, okay, um, right, so anyone who's wondering why I still have not fixed up these walls, there's no point. So, I have always sort of done this the way I've done this when playing my own sort of little game. And I've never had a problem with having my horde base right next to my own base. They never got stuck behind here, they never spawned inside now. They have, they do now, they're spawning in here, because it seems to be from where you're standing they spawn, not from where your bag is from where your 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 um sleeping bag is now that's where it gets interesting so now my question is it has it always been like that and i'm gonna assume it has so my question is um because i highly doubt that's something they would have changed in alpha 21 so my question is why have i never had that problem before and i am wondering if i normally do the base further up like if i have the bit that i need to do maybe further up so maybe sticking out over the edge and I've just and for some reason I'm just far enough back that when I'm standing there so instead of maybe standing there that's triggering them inside the base whereas normally they maybe would have spawned exactly just outside the base and then run up I don't know but all I know is this time round they're spawning inside and there's no point in me taking this away uh, at the moment until I've moved into the other base and then this has been demolished um, so I will repair it up once that has a card, but until then, there is absolutely no point. That's interesting. I'm not getting the nice music. I wonder if there's something nearby outside the base. Oh no, it's switched. Didn't mean to do that. That gives me a bigger turnaround circle now. In the long run, what I would do if I was playing for this longer, but I haven't had it to the stage that I get this. This would go up all the way to the same level as this. And then there would be a platform up here and I, that would be up and it would be out and it would be powered and I would actually park up here. And that way I don't have an entrance directly onto my lower level. I come in at that level and then come down and this is kept fully protected and fully enclosed. But I'm not doing that this time round. Um, just because I haven't got to the stage where I have powered layers yet. 
so um I just haven't found those books. I just it's actually strange how little you know how much harder I found this one. Now is that again because when we're playing as a team there's a division of labor and I'm constantly in and they just bring me shiny books back and I love it. Um I don't know because when you've got one person focusing on the base and the food and all of that, you don't, you know, and you've got two people out searching constantly, you're bringing massive amounts back. You've got a day plus a night dedicated to searching because all of the house building, all the mining, all the cooking is getting done by somebody else. So you're not really thinking about it. You just come in, drop off the loot and um, pick up your good, you know, and, and, and pick up the things you need. Um, okay, so crucible. Right, so we need mechanical parts, oil and soil. So we'll set that cooking. Mechanical parts, oil, and soil was the other one we needed. So let's get the crucible cooking. So that's that in. Gonna swap that back out, put that back in the building box, and put the soil away. Excellent. So we've got that on. That's gonna keep going. We're good with that, I think. So we are gonna leave it here, guys. It has been a good one. In terms of for me, so for me, this has been brilliant. It has been really comfortable. It is the standard of what I know for playing this game because I'm normally the little uh homebody who does everything that needs to be done while everybody else searches so it has been for me great because it's been a much more what i'm used to spending my days doing when i play in a team um but it doesn't mean i don't enjoy doing the rest of it in fact i there have been times i have really loved some of the stuff we've done for sure um but you know these things still need done no matter what we say these still need done and hopefully if anyone is interested in how we do our minds and keep our minds up and running without having them collapse maybe it's it's given someone some insight i don't know but either way it is part of the game that needs to be done i am gonna leave this here guys i hope you have enjoyed it if you have and you aren't subscribed to us do have a look at a couple of our videos and certainly make that decision and give us a subscribe if you enjoy them and obviously you know a like on the video always helps us too we love to get your comments and we love to hear from you and about things you think so we will see you next time all enjoy